Alrighty, you're uh, done with the money block. Pretty sweet. We're going to go new design here or file new, whatever. Make sure you're still in that same project. And we're going to do a little engraving project that I like to do. It's kind of fun. Um, it's just basically just a fun little image. You pick your logo type of deal. Get a four inch by six inch piece of aluminum and do a little engraving on there to make kind of a plaque, which, which looks pretty cool when it's done. So, um, Let's go ahead and let's get right after it. So we're in the design uh, toolbar. We'll hit create sketch. We'll go ahead and select the top plane. We'll go ahead and do a two point rectangle. I'll drag it down this time just for fun. Six. I'm going to use the tab key to get me over here. Four. So six by four and enter. Go ahead and take that rectangle into uh, four by six. Finish sketch. You know, one thing I, I forgot to mention in the other video or at some point, notice how all my stuff comes to inches. Uh, the document settings tab is that's where that happens at. So my units are in inches right there. If I want to change that, I have to click that little icon and change that to millimeters or inches or, and I can make that the default. So every time I use Fusion, it opens up in inches for me because that's what we're using. And, you know, I missed that step on that first video. So uh, we, we, Definitely want to make sure it's inches now, so we're good. Next up, we'll extrude. Uh, we'll go ahead and just drag that up. Go ahead and click on that little arrow, drag it up to 0.25. Enter, because it'll be a quarter inch piece of aluminum. And that looks pretty good. Next up, I want to kind of take a picture uh, of, you know, an image of what I want to do. And then I'm going to, the easiest way to do it is kind of trace around that image if you're going to use the, the torch mate. Um, sorry, the Tormach to do uh, CNC milling. If we use the Torchmate, which is our plasma cutter, that this this workflow looks a little different. But for us, this is this is what we need um, to start with. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I want to find an image. So I am a big Hawkeyes fan. You guys know that. So I typed in Iowa Hawkeyes and I went to images, and I just I I think I kind of like. Kind of like the tiger hawk here, and maybe I might even put that oval around there. Um, either of these are going to be fine. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and grab this this picture right here, and I'm going to right click on it, and I'm going to save that image. And I'm going to save it somewhere where I know where I'm going to be able to find it. So I'm going to go downloads. Uh, it looks like it's a PNG, so hopefully that all comes through. We'll find out. Sometimes the file format does matter. Okay, but we'll give. PNG a little little side thing here. We'll give it a try. All right, get that done, and we're ready to start. Uh, click on that face, and go ahead and start yourself a new sketch. Um, you're gonna go to insert, and you're going to oops, you're gonna go insert, and again you're gonna look for an image that you need here. So depending on what you have. Um, you might have an this SVG file format, but mine was different. So I'm going to use decal right here. And I'm going to go insert from my computer. Hey, look at that. That's a good looking guy right there, huh? A little, ooh, not so good. There, oh yeah, yeah. But that, oh, sorry, my bad. That's not what we want here. We want desktop. That's where I saved that thing from. No, I didn't. Where did I save that? Downloads, my bad. Boom. I did have an SVG, so I could have done that, but that's okay. Open, let's see what we got. Select this face, there it is, all right. Um, first thing, uh, it kind of depends on how you want this to look, like this is up to you, but I'm gonna, I definitely know I wanna rotate this thing, so I can click, I can click and drag this thing around. I wanna rotate it, so that's, that's that. The other thing that you might wanna do is make it a little bit bigger, you know? And so if you look, do you see that little, it looks like a little curved guy right there. You got to click and drag that. See that? Oh, yeah. I'll make it a little bit. I got to have a little bit of what I call white space around your edges, okay? Because we don't want to machine into the vise or anything. Now we can move it left and right with those handles. Now I'm looking at it in an isometric view. It's kind of hard to see. So I'm going to click top. I'm going to use that rotate key. There we go. And so now I can kind of definitely get that thing to kind of snap where I want it to snap. Get it kind of centered in there. Pretty good there. Okay. Looks good, eh? I like it. I like it. 
All right, so if you like this, then basically all you got to do is hit OK. And now you got yourself an image on here. Be cool if it just looked like that, but uh, we're going to need to actually physically trace around this thing so we can pick up edges to machine later on, like we did with the money block. So looks like we'll slide this thing over here. All right. So let's let's go ahead and get going on that. So we're going to create another new sketch again on this face. Whoa, that's kind of weird. I don't want to look at it like this. So I'm going to rotate, rotate. You may or may not have to do that on yours, right? We just need to make it so we can look at it nice. Now from here, my favorite tool probably is on this create menu. And um, when I go to uh, arc, I use this three point arc. I use that a lot for stuff because I can control it. But the key to tracing around this thing is really just making sure that you stop and start in the right spot. So remember the scroll wheel can zoom you in and out. So go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to start. You're going to click here. You're going to click. I'm going to click here. And you see my arc right there? I'm going to kind of start drag that out a little bit. It's going to snap to where I want it to go unless I hold the control key down. If I hold the control key down, I can go ahead and snap that thing where I want it to go. Boom. 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 Kind of just biting off some chunks here. I'm not going to lie, that black outline is kind of hard to see. And you can kind of take as much or as as least time as you want on something like this. Obviously, you could use straight lines too if you wanted to. Um, I don't want to. So remember, the control key is what takes all that stuff away. Or even the control key changes where you can hit the endpoint on the line as well. So. Definitely, if you're tracing something, that control key you're probably going to use a lot. I'm going to get kind of greedy now. Get a big chunk out of the way. Because I don't want you guys to sit here and get bored watching me trace around this thing. But you know how it goes. Trying, trying to go quick. But the main thing is that you always... You always hit that block. See how it gets that, that square around it? That's really important to this process. Otherwise, you're, you're not going to be... Oh, that was a bad one, but that's okay. All right. Did it. Okay. I would need to do the rest of these, all right? So just pretend I did the rest of them because otherwise you're going to sit here and watch me do it forever. So now I'm all done. I'm not going to do that R. I just did all that. Yeah, maybe I do an oval around here. Maybe I don't. Whatever you want in your design, okay? Then hit finish sketch. And I'm going to zoom out a little. I'm going to hit the home button. All right, so that's the CAD work. The CAD work's done. That's what you needed it to do, okay? Now it's time to make it. So similar to the money block, the money block we did earlier, we're going to go to manufacture get my cam toolbar here again I have to start with a setup I'm gonna go to stock and I'm gonna say hey I'm gonna go ahead and no additional stock this I made it I'm gonna grab a piece of metal that's exactly four by six we're good to go hit okay um, oh don't hit okay because the zero was on the wrong spot so if that's the case I just double click setup one that's how I get back here not a big deal I need to get to this setup tab so I can do I can put this where I want it right so I'm going to go ahead and put that thing over here. And I'm going to go ahead and use the lower left-hand corner where I'm at right now. But the thing is, is, I want my X and Y and my Z to change. You know, just like we did in the last the last one. So rather than model orientation, I'll go Z and X plane again. I'll pick this edge. I'll zoom in a little. Maybe. Pick that. There we go. Might change where my model point is. That's okay. The X is going the right direction. And again, if I need to move that back, I just go to box points, brings them back up, click the one I want. 
X is going that way. I'm going to hit top plane so you can see the X is here, Y is here. So my zero with the laser pointer will be down here in the lower left-hand corner when I set this bad boy up. Z is the top of the part. Love it. Hit OK. Looks good. All right. Time to, time to go through. Now we can use a couple different tool paths here. We could use the 2D contour that we used before. We could use the engraved tool path as well. It just kind of depends on how intricate your your part is okay i usually try to use engrave first but if it doesn't work i i go back to 2d contour which is what what we did on our other one so i'll, I'll kind of do both of those for you guys real quick like so let's go into 2d and let's go to engrave first so we want to go to tool select a tool now the only tool that we've made so far is that tool four that big tool and that's not going to work so we're going to have to make ourselves a new one so plus engrave chamfer mill we're going to call this engraver that's the name of our tool cutter itself little engraving tools they actually look like let me grab this picture here for you guys look like this right here so it's just got a little single tooth on here um you know however you want to look at it two sides to it but a real real small little tool uh, so you can get precisely into stuff you know what I mean so we'll go ahead and put two teeth on there oops and then we'll come down to diameter that's 0.25 is the one we have the shaft is, is also 0.25 the tip is zero because it goes basically to nothing all right the overall length of the whole thing is two inches. This length below the holder is two inches. The shoulder is really small on this thing, actually. It's only like half of an inch, so 0.5. And the shoulder, see how it gives you some errors, which is kind of cool. The shor shoulder length must be larger than the flute length. So, you know, this has to be larger than that but the flute length is only 375 so that will work taper angle shows you if you click on it it'll show you this too you see that so if you just click in here it's showing you what it's asking about here so it is this actually is 30 degrees and see this actually preview is what it looks like when it's done that makes the inclusive angle 60 degrees which is right shaft I'm not gonna put a shaft on there and I'm not gonna put a holder on there I'm gonna go right over to the cutting data I'm gonna go ahead and spin this thing at 3000 rpms because that's my max spindle speed on these machines ramp speed keep that at max as well even though we won't be ramping in this part anyway uh, this is a really, really tiny tool here. And even though we're cutting in aluminum, um, you know, we're not, that's pretty close to 200, so that's good. But this feed per tooth, it's going to have to be really, really small on that cutter. So when I change that feed per tooth and I click up here, you'll notice it changes to six. And six is a good cutting feed rate for us on that. So I'm going to see six because I don't like all those decimals in my G code. So we'll go there. And as far as ramping, again, we're not going to be ramping. So, you know, I'll just put six in there, but we're not even going to have to use it. I always plunge at half the speed, so I'm going to plunge at three. Looks good. Post-processor, again, this is a new tool for us. We have not used tool six, so we'll go ahead and use tool six. Hit accept. Awesome. And select. Alrighty, looking good here. So bringing this bad boy over. Um, next, we'll go to geometry. And we'll say, all right, what do you wanna, what do you wanna engrave? And I wanna engrave that whole thing I did. So you might have to select each thing. If it's a closed shape, it'll just go ahead and just select. It'll, it'll grab the whole thing when you click once. So that's cool. And then I'll go to heights. And again, the bottom height on this one, since I didn't extrude cut it. I'm going to go ahead and use an absolute value. And I'm going to use 
20 thou is how deep I want to engrave that. 0 0.020. 0. One more over. So we'll talk about tolerances and angles. We don't need multiple depths. We don't need, you know, lead ins and lead outs. We don't need any of that. So we just hit OK. And when we hit OK, it brings us over here. OK, simulate. It's under the action. Simulate. Make sure stock is checked. Hit play. You know, that was fast. But it does it. It all goes through. All right. Two minutes just to do that because it's slow. Slow feed rate. Engraving takes a while because it's a tiny little cutter. But, dude, it's, it's good. I like it. Everything looks good on it. I'd keep it. Okay. Um, I'm going to hit close. And if you remember, you know, if this was your whole thing and you were good to go, you'd, you'd post process. All right. But uh, I'm going to show you another another method if you if you need to. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that engrave. I'm going to right click. You don't need to do this. This is just me me showing another way if you didn't like the engrave. OK, if it didn't work out for you, you go to 2D and you go to 2D contour. You select your tool. That's already been made right here. It is. You hit select. You're happy about that because all this stuff comes back in there for you, okay? Yes, we want to keep the flood cooling going. Geometry this time. Again, it selects everything. Otherwise, I'd select each piece. Everything's good there. Heights, do exactly the same thing. Change this to origin. Change it to 20 thou. Negative 0 0.020. Now, when you come over here, you're going to get some more options, okay? Take the chamfer off. You don't want that. Take the chamfer off. Go to the last tab for linking, and you want to take lead in off, lead out off, okay? That's it. And then hit OK. And that'll go through, and we can, not tool library, we can simulate, play. <whistles> Looks good. Statistics will be the same time. It's doing the same thing. And it's just one more way to do it if engrave does not work for you or you don't like how it looks after it's done. Okay? Um, close. If it's all good to go, you're ready to, to uh, do your normal post process. Check to make sure your machine says Tormach Path Pilot. Check to make sure your name is in here somewhere. And make sure you know where you're saving it to. Okay? So uh, this will be Benham. And I'll put engrave on here as well. And then make sure you know where that's going. If that's going to your flash drive, it's probably the easiest way so you can get it to the machine. And then hit post. And again, make sure you know what you're calling it. I'm going to call it two this way. Save it. And it should come up on your flash drive. Oh, cool. This came up nice. Last time I didn't do this. All right, nice. So there you go. There's your code. Benham engrave. You're using tool six. It's all the code you need to make that thing. And you didn't have to write it and graph it out on paper. So pretty fun. Um, pretty fun deal. You can make lots of different things. And, um, you know, curves do things. Circles do things. Text. You can use the text tool if you want. Um, there's just lots of ways to do stuff with this, this little plaque exercise. So we call this the engrave challenge. So this is one of your other projects you'll be doing with the cam stuff. So um, hope you guys enjoyed got any questions let me know other than that like always let's uh let's just live the dream